Hey everybody, welcome back here to another video training in the Personal Income Tax Course Training Series. In this tutorial, in this video, we're going to get into something a little bit more exciting. The first two training videos were really about deadly sins and filing mistakes. They focused more on the negative side of tax. In this one here, let's get into something a little bit more upbeat. Let's get into maybe you starting your own personal income tax preparation business. Uh, it could be any size from doing you know, a few returns, maybe for your family members, all the way up to doing hundreds of returns with employees and a location and so forth. So one of uh, a few of the questions, I have a lot of clients who are interested in personal income tax preparation. They go out, take courses. They might go out and uh, wanna start a business someday. And they usually ask for some advice from myself and perhaps other accountants and maybe uh, take a little bit of a mentorship type of role. So what I decided to do here was put together a little video, a training video here on starting your own little tax practice. So what we'll do is we'll look at uh, some of the costs involved and I guess the process. So what you should do to uh, be able to prepare income tax returns for the uh, general public. We'll also look at systems. So the systems you should put in place once you do decide to open your doors uh, systems that will make your life a lot easier when you actually start preparing the tax returns and dealing with your customers and clients. And finally, some advice from an entrepreneur standpoint, maybe some uh, tips to help you focus and tips on helping you become the best tax prepara uh, the best tax preparer in a particular area. I'll give you some really good tips on what you should focus on. All right, let's get started. So how much does it cost to start a tax preparation business or what what do you have to pay for or what should you pay for? Well, there are five things. The first thing is proper training. This is of the utmost importance and that's probably why you're here watching these training videos and probably why you will register for the personal income tax course. Proper training is a must. I think it's obvious that anybody who doesn't know anything about taxes probably shouldn't be preparing taxes. So training is wide encompassing. Uh, you know, the personal income tax course, what I focus on is really the practical uh, side of the tax return. We will look at the actual forms. We'll look at the actual slips. I'll give you some real world advice as to what the CRA looks for and what they don't look for. My course, the personal income tax course here for SBC Knowledge and Udemy is really focused on kind of like the day-to-day -day stuff, the actual return, the preparation of the return itself. I don't go into a lot of theory. Now, the theory is very important as well. Um, you know, it's kind of like a 50,000 foot view type of thing. So a lot of college and university courses or maybe your local uh, community college might be offering continuing education courses on tax. A lot of those take the kind of top-down approach. So they look at how the Income Tax Act is structured and look at some of the law and the cases behind what has created modern day income tax legislation. It's very good training and I recommend that you can take that you take really any training that you can afford that's within your budget. There's really there's really nobody out there that knows everything about income tax act. It is such a complicated uh, field. The income tax act itself is thousands of pages. People specialize in various aspects of it there's really no way you will ever learn everything you need to know about the Income Tax Act. But what I always say is if you know 20% of the act, you'll be able to do 80% of people's tax returns out there. A lot of that technical stuff really is for high-end business transactions and doesn't apply to the majority of Canadians. So for yourself, just learning about 20% of the Income Tax Act and knowing how to prepare personal tax returns at the general level or the intermediate level will allow you to do up to 80% maybe of people's tax returns. It's just the Pareto Principle, 2080. So it's one of those things where you try to get as much training as you can within your budget and you know you go out and you start your business and focus on preparing tax returns in a general sense or focused on a particular niche, which we'll get into here uh, in a little while. So proper training, well, you could spend, you know, as little as $500, you could spend all the way up to $2,000. As I said, it all depends on your budget and all training is 
you know, will will do you a benefit. So anything you can afford, I would suggest doing it, you know, doing it. But on average, I think people probably spend between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars just to get that general knowledge and the information you'll need to prepare basic and general tax returns. The second cost would be registering your business. Now, there's two ways you can run your business. You can either run it as a proprietorship or maybe a partnership with somebody else. And registering that is relatively straightforward and inexpensive. It's usually between $60 and $100, I think, depending on what province you're in. If you would like to incorporate, well, that is a whole new can of worms. Incorporation can cost you from as little as $400 to as much as $1,500, depending on if you do it yourself or if you ask an accountant to do it or a lawyer to do it, and if you have other partners and shareholders involved in the business. In my Small Business Blueprint course, also offered at SBC and on Udemy, I go into all the nitty-gritty on starting a business. We go into the advantages and disadvantages of proprietorships versus corporations, how to register proprietorships and corporations, and I give you really a recipe or a blueprint for starting your business in seven steps and show you how you pay yourself, how you can pay yourself salary, dividends, and so forth. So for the purpose of this course though, registering your business can be anywhere from as low as $60, again, depending on your province, all the way up to about $1,000 or $1,500 if you go the full route and get a lawyer to do it for you or an accountant to do it for you with the minute book and the registers and so forth. Now registering for e-filing, if you are preparing tax returns for the public, you have to register as an e-filer with the Canada Revenue Agency. The good news on that is that it's absolutely free. You just have to go through their screening process and really what it is is a process where the CRA looks at you and the people preparing the returns and making sure really that they're up to date with their own taxes. So that makes sense. The government doesn't want you to be preparing tax returns for the public when you're five years behind in your own taxes. So. If you are planning to register for e-filing and, re and filing other people's tax returns, you have to be up to date with your own taxes. So really, first step is get your own house in order. So, But for the cost, registration is free. It's just a very simple process that you go online to the CRA website, register, they provide you with an e-file number and a password, and then you plug that into the software that you're going to be using, and you're off to the races. All right. Tax software, I just mentioned, you plug your e-file number in and you're off. How much does tax software cost? Well, this is probably the biggest expense on an annual basis in terms of preparing the tax returns themselves. Unfortunately, depending on how many tax returns you do, you can't go to your local, you know, software, uh, you know, shop that sells software like Best Buy or Future Shop or wherever online and buy the Quick Tax or the TurboTax. Those programs only allow you to do a certain number of tax returns. I think, uh, I'm not even sure because I don't use them, but you know, TurboTax might be 10 tax returns, uh, U-File might be 50, and you can purchase additional tax returns from the software company itself that you'll be able to do additional tax returns. But really what you should be looking at is if you're starting your own business is look at professional tax software. I myself use a program called Profile, and that's owned by Intuit, the company that uh, owns QuickBooks. And there's other software programs out there, and they range in cost. There's Tax Prep, which is owned by CCH. And, you know, the software, depending on if you're just doing T1 tax returns, could be as little as $500, usually about $1,000, depending on, um, you know, how many tax returns you're going to file. And if you want e-filing, which you're obviously going to want because everybody has to e-file their returns nowadays. So I would budget about thousand dollars to purchase software and that's really if you are doing it yourself I believe that's up to five licenses and that's just for the t1 software itself if you're gonna be getting into filing corporate tax returns and trust returns and things like that then it's gonna be much higher I believe my annual tax software fee for five users here at my office who prepare returns is about three thousand dollars and that's usually the upper end for a small practice the more people that you have working on taxes, then you buy the general license, and then I believe the software company can charge you, you know, three or four hundred bucks for each additional person or user over and above that. So, you must be prepared to spend quite a bit of money on software. As I mentioned, it is probably uh, one of the bigger costs here because it is an annual cost because you have to keep the 
program updated in order to do the current year returns. So you might want to do some research on those tax. Go to Google, type in professional tax software Canada. You'll get tax prep profile. Uh, I think there's CanTax. There's a few other. Um, there's a few other new companies that offer some pretty good, uh, some good, pretty good products. So just do some research there, and you'll be able to pick whichever one is best for your needs. And finally, put your systems in place. Systems are very important. I am a systems person. I don't like to fly by the seat of my pants. So at tax season here in my office, we have different bins for different you know, areas of the process those returns are in. We have incoming, we have processing, we have waiting for clients. We have a system basically put in place for everything. So costs on your system will really just be how much you want to spend at Business Depot, really. So, I mean, depending on what kind of supplies you want, if you want bins or if you want banker boxes to put things in, folders, I mean, you're going to need paper, obviously. All that type of stuff costs money. It's just money that you spend, you know, from an office expense standpoint, I guess, to put your systems in place. So let's look at systems now. Systems are what is going to drive your business and what is going to make your tax preparation business either stressful or run through or run through flawlessly and I really recommend that you take some time sit down and prepare some systems that you'll be able to access and use and have your employees or helpers use as well so what kind of things should you look at in your system well the most important thing is that you're in business to make money so how are you going to be pricing yourself are you going to be pricing yourself as a budget preparer which I never recommend you do are you going to be you know in the middle of the line um, are you going to be a higher end tax preparer maybe specializing on a specific niche you have to come up with your pricing system and your pricing policy another system is okay you will charge for doing a basic tax return so let's just say a hundred dollars and then charge for additional slips over and above five slips, for example. Or are you going to charge by the form? So if you do a tax return that has childcare expenses, are you going to charge an extra $30 for childcare expenses? If you're doing a business return, maybe you charge an extra two or $300 for that. Are you going to be charging by the hour? It's really important that you put a pricing system in place because that is where you should be consistent. If I come in your door and give you a tax return and you quote me $150, well, if the person behind me comes in and has the same exact tax return, you shouldn't really be quoting them 120. We should be consistent all across the boards. You should always come up with policies for drop off and pick up. This is you know, the biggest area of confusion a lot of times in tax season we find where we don't know you know who's brought in their tax returns where it is um, did they give us everything uh, okay the tax return is done did, uh, did Frank and Lisa pick up their tax returns did they sign did we e-file it you should have a system and policies and procedures in place for all of this so for example drop off you say client comes to the office drops it off the person who gets the file gets their physical file from the filing cabinet sorts through all the receipts and puts it into the processing bin and then from the processing bin whoever is processing it picks it up and goes to work on it pickup is the same thing what happens when the tax return is completed okay well we have a you know two-step process we first send the client an email telling them that their tax return is ready for pickup and signing or review and then we give them a phone call and once we have any sort of confirmation from the client we keep a quick note in the file as to what the client said and when we can expect them. And then it goes into the pickup box, for example. So as you can see, you really should put a physical system in place. And believe me, this will save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of headache. And most of all, it'll save you a lot of stress. Because when Tony calls and he's asking, you know, what's the status of my tax return? Then the worst thing is not knowing what happened to Tony's stuff? Did Tony come in? Did he mail the stuff in? Did uh, anybody look at it? Did anybody open the package? Who put the package where? Where is it? Is it in the processing? It can be a disaster sometimes, and you really have to know where it is in the process. So when Tony calls, you can look at your system, your boxes, or you know whatever you're using, a shelf, whatever the case is, and say, oh yeah, Tony is in the review file. So uh, he's in the review file. It should be ready within a day or two as it goes through the review process. 
So very, very important. Put a procedure in place for drop off and pick up. Follow up on information. This is crucial as well. I think nowadays, if we have everything we need to prepare somebody's tax returns and complete it from start to finish the first time we pick up the file, if that happens 30% of the time, 40% of the time, I'll be shocked. Most of the time, you are missing some piece of information. There's T-slips missing. There's uh, you know information from financial planners missing. They're missing T, uh, you know, a return slip. They haven't given you all their expenses. They haven't given you all their donations. There's always something missing. So you have to have a system for following up on clients. We use, once again, another bin, another box, and follow-up is sending the client an email that we, were, we need information and sending a phone call or giving them a phone call as well, so that way they have it in both those kind of gathering points, so to speak. So following up on information is important. You should have somebody or yourself look through that follow-up bin on really a daily basis and see what the status is, because I'll tell you what happens. When you get close to the deadline and it's the 20th, the 22nd, the 23rd, and you haven't really followed up on your follow-up, well, the it starts really getting jammed in that bin there, and then you're stressed out because people either forgot or put it off or, you know, they didn't get the message. And then you're left with all of this follow-up information, all of this missing information on, you know, a number of people's tax returns that just make the last week of tax return a living hell sometimes. If you follow this up or allocate somebody to do this for you on a daily basis, just keep reminding the clients, then you will be in a good position because at least if you quote unquote harass the client to get you the stuff, then as soon as you get it, it goes back into the processing bin and you can get it done. Very important. And finally, review and finalization. There is never a tax return that should go out of your business without being reviewed and finalized. If you are the only person in your business because you're the only one doing it, well, here's what you do. You process the tax return, you put it all together, you input the slips, you do the tax return, and then what you do is you close that file and you put it into the review bin. And what I would suggest is coming back to that same file another time, at another time. So specif you know, specify a time in the day where you're just gonna review tax returns that you've already prepared. And the reason for that is because it's very easy to miss things when you are going through it and entering information the first time. I know it's not the most productive because, you know, I'm one of the ones who say that, you know, when you pick up a file, you should only pick it up once, finish it and get it out the door. But in tax returns, because there is so much detail and so many slips and so much information, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend doing the return and putting it off until a little bit later, maybe even the next day, just to review and finalize it and get a fresh perspective on it. Get your, you know, your fresh set of eyes on it. And I'll guarantee you in a lot of the cases, you will have missed something. You will have missed a box on a T3 slip or a T5 slip. You will have missed putting in all the medical expenses, for example. You will have missed something. And when you review it, you can do the final review, do the finalization, make sure you're happy with the tax return. And then you go from there, call the client, finalize it, get paid and you are done. So that's very important. Review and finalization. If you have other people working for you or with you, then you you put you allocate somebody to actually do the review. So if, so if I'm, for example, in business with a partner, well, the returns that I prepare, I'll have my partner review and vice versa. The returns that they review or par they prepare, I will review two sets of eyes. You're always gonna catch something or come up with new ideas very, very important. Okay, so now what I want to do is really try to help you grow your business and be very successful. I'm going to give you some business accelerator tips here that, you know, I've found in my practice is the best way to run a tax practice. I'm more of a general accountant, so I have more of a general tax practice in that I prepare tax returns mainly for my corporate clients and their family and friends and associates and colleagues and so forth. But I think if I were ever to start my own tax preparation business and just focus on personal tax returns, I would actually approach it in this way. And I think you'll find that if you do apply these business accelerator tips, you will be very, very successful. And really my concept is now looking at it from a business standpoint for you. I want you to make the most amount of 
most amount of money preparing the least amount of tax returns. If you're thinking of going out and just preparing hundreds and hundreds of general tax returns and hiring people, I can tell you right now from experience, you're probably not going to make a lot of money. The tax return preparation business is cutthroat. A lot of people prepare it on their own now. You really got to apply these business accelerator tips and try to make money preparing as few tax returns as you can for the highest amount of money. So let's go through some of these tips. The first tip I always say, this applies to any business and particularly so I think for personal tax returns is yeah, it's focus, focus, focus. Focus on one aspect of a business or one type of tax return. Go out there and find yourself a niche market. And when you are in that niche market, you become the go-to person for that type of tax return. Let's just use an example. Maybe, for example, you might have been a, I don't know, a mechanic that, you know, in your past uh, career. And what you want to do now is just prepare tax returns because you're really interested in tax and you want to, you know, get away from working on cars and that physical labor and go and prepare tax returns. Why don't you specialize in preparing tax returns for mechanics, for example? You know everything there is to know about the business. So that already is an advantage over anybody else. And you can really empathize and sympathize with all the mechanics that you prepare tax returns for because you've been a mechanic. You've been there. They're gonna, you're going to end up being you know, almost like their psychiatrist or their psychologist because your mechanic clients will call you up and you can actually add some input that another tax repairer sitting at H&R Block won't be able to add because they've never been involved in the business. So I'm just using an example, but try to focus on something. Focus on a particular niche and really, really concentrate on that. I'll get into this in a few uh, more in a few more minutes here, but the biggest business accelerator tip for any business, I always start off with this in any seminars I do, is find a niche. Don't be a generalist. Try to find something that you can do and be an expert or a guru at that and be the go-to person. Second, well, here we go. Let's look at some of these areas of, of expertise. Okay, so what kind of expertise or what kind of areas can you specialize in for tax returns? Well, one of them is seniors. There are certain you know, rules, benefits, and little you know, little things that apply to seniors that might not apply to everybody else as an employee or businesses. So seniors a lot of times are in their retirement years they'd like to find ways to minimize their taxes there are certain tax credits and deductions that are more likely to be claimed by seniors well you can become a specialist in that and know everything there is to know about tax you know credits for seniors so seniors usually have a lot of medical expenses so if you focus and do a lot of your research and follow up on use items uh, with regards to tax in the area of medical expenses, for example, you can be of service to seniors. Uh, specialize in, you know, knowing what there is to know about pensions. There, this Canada Pension Plan, the old age security. Uh, specialize in, you know, knowing about company pensions and public pensions because a lot of the seniors will have questions with regards to that. And if they know that you focus on seniors, then you can be the go-to person for seniors. Another big area is people with disabilities. There are special rules, regulations, tax credits that are available to people with disabilities. And to be quite honest, these things change all the time. And there are a lot of companies out there that focus on getting benefits for seniors or anybody with disabilities, seniors, uh, you know, students, uh, you know, disabilities obviously don't just apply to seniors. Anybody can have a disability regardless of age. So go out and get as much information, find out about government programs, find out what tax return, uh, what tax deductions and credits are available. Go out there and become something of a specialist in people with disabilities and try to get as much money for people in, those, in that category from the Canada Revenue Agency and the federal, the Ontario governments. Believe me, you will be getting lots of referrals because well, with, se with anybody, obviously, with seniors and people with disabilities, they have a tendency to be involved with other people. Seniors obviously have other friends and family who are seniors. People with disabilities, well, they'll have other colleagues and other people that they associate with from whatever programs they might be involved in who are disabled as well from schools. And then if you are 
you know, a star to somebody because you got them, you know, X number of thousands of dollars back from the registered disability savings program, for example, they'll be, you know, tooting your horn to all of their other, you know, people who might have somebody in their family with a disability. And believe me, the phone will be ringing off the hook. Rental income. There's a lot of rental properties out there. Well, maybe you are a real estate investor yourself and you have some rental properties. Well, you know what? Why don't you concentrate on just doing tax returns for people with rental income? You can provide them with guides and maybe some videos and tips on, you know, preparing their documentation and so forth. So you can specialize in rental income and only prepare tax returns with those people with rental income. And the great thing with people with rental income is those tax returns are usually you can justify charging quite a bit more because there is more work involved, but it's very, very straightforward. What else we got? Business income. This is a, an obvious one. What I would say is areas of I would focus business income even more. I would have a laser beam focus or niche on business income. I used the example a few minutes ago on the mechanic. Try to find a business that you really enjoy or maybe you've been involved in in the past and have a history with and focus on that business. So be it, you know, maybe your uh, maybe someone in your family is a contractor. Maybe your husband is a contractor. So you know everything there is to know about the contracting business with WSIB and expenses and things like that, inventory and, you know, find a niche within the business community and then be the go to person for that particular niche. I know somebody who only prepares the tax returns for general contractors or contractors. So, you know, she does return. She's worked at the WSIB before. Actually, I'm not even sure. She might have even retired now. But anyways, she only did returns for contractors because she worked at the WSIB and she was involved in the contracting world. She knows everything there is to know. And her husband was a contractor. So she had all these. Not only did she do a great return, you know, job on the on the tax return, she was a go-to person for contacts if they had problems with the WSIB or if they needed contractors in a particular uh, in a particular field or trade. She would know people because her husband knew people. She became the go-to person for contractors because they would all use her to do their tax return because they trusted her and because she was a vital resource to them. All right, another area: students and their families. You know, tuition is a big. Uh, tax credit and it's uh, while well, it's not overly complicated it can get a little bit tricky so if you focus on doing tax returns for students and their families and putting a plan in place for how they're going to be claiming those tuition credits I think you will be doing those people a great service and investors so these would be people who maybe have you know investment income because they own stocks or bonds or mutual funds and they get a lot of tea slips in the mail and really don't know really how it impacts their tax returns. So what you can do is you can focus on people who have investments, who only have, you know, who have a certain level of investments, for example, $100,000 of non-registered investments. Or maybe you can team up with the financial planner who will give you tax returns to prepare from their client base. Another great area of expertise is investors and once again, with this type of tax return, you can probably charge a lot more than a general return because they are a little bit more focused and more complicated. So very good way to prepare a fewer number of tax returns at the highest possible price. All right, finally here, this is a great business accelerator tip. Be of service to your niche market as I've been talking about. Don't just be the person, the guy or the person to you know who they have do their tax return where they just drop off their stuff put it all together don't look at it and then you know maybe have some problems in the future because things were missed try to be of service to your niche market over and above just preparing their tax return preparing a tax return really is going to keep you busy from probably february to june 15th let's just say if you have a lot of business income you should really be of service and you know, help these people out during the year as well. Maybe you can prepare a guide to help them with their business and, you know, help them save money on their taxes. You know, you can do a rental income guide on tips on how to, you know, write certain things off, things you can work, you know, write off, things you can't write off. Be a go-to person for referrals or for, you know, for contacts. As I mentioned with my, uh, you know, my friend colleague here who concentrated on doing contractors. Well, you know what? 
she is the go-to person when they need uh, somebody to do hardwood. Hey, do you know somebody who's uh, reliable and does hardwood? Oh, yes, I do. My client actually does hardwood flooring. So not only are you preparing tax returns and the service for your clients, you're actually helping them grow their business. And that is really the key to success. The key to success is givers gain. If you give, you will gain. So if people are calling you and you, you know, the tax preparer, you as a tax preparer are referring business to your own clients, then you will be an invaluable resource to that particular client. They're going to love you and they are never going to leave you. So that is one of the things that you should really focus on before you start your business. How can I be of value? Pick a niche, get your systems in place. Okay, how can I be of value? What can I offer? Maybe I can do some video training on my niche market. Maybe I can prepare a really, a really great guide on it. Maybe I can put some seminars or webinars together for you know contractors or people who own flower shops or whatever the case is, or for seniors that they can come online and I can train them. Be of service to your niche market and you are guaranteed to be successful. All right. So those are my tips on helping you get on your way to starting your own tax practice. I hope you found them useful. I hope you found them valuable. I hope I served you and good luck with it. Focus on a niche, be of value to customers, and you will always, always be successful.